Hi, I'm Colin G. West, and this is Poker Science. One thing I love about poker is that, unlike many other card games, you don't have to have a particular number of people around to get a game going. You could play with just two people, or theoretically, as many as 23 before the deck will run out of cards. It's an incredibly flexible game. That said, when you change the number of players, the gameplay changes as well. And many players underestimate how dramatic these changes can be. You are not a pair of spandex pants. You don't have to try to be one size fits all, especially at the poker table. And the adjustments you make when you go from playing in a full ring to a small game should be more than just minor optional tweaks. The underlying math has changed dramatically. Your strategy should too. Let me give you two examples of how significantly the probabilities change with the size of the group. Imagine you're in a game with nine other players and you look down to see the worst possible pocket pair, pocket deuces. There are a lot of things that can affect how you play this hand, where you're seated, what you know about the other players, how many chips you have in front of you. But setting all those things aside, one way to estimate the strength of a hand like this is to ask what's the probability that someone else has been dealt a higher pocket pair? In a 10-person game, the probability that someone has a higher pair than your deuces is around 42%. It's not quite a 50-50 proposition, but it's close. And it shows why a baby pair like this can be difficult to play. But what if you were playing in a smaller game? Of course, with fewer opponents to worry about, there are fewer ways that bad things can happen to you. For example, it's less likely that someone at the table thinks a fidget spinner is an appropriate card protector. And it's also less likely that someone wakes up with a bigger pair. At first, this effect is small. In an eight or nine player game, the percentages are fairly comparable to what they would be in a 10 player situation. But the smaller the table gets, the more dramatically the math shifts. In a six player game, the odds that someone wakes up with a pair bigger than your pocket deuces are around 25%. And by the time you get down to a two player game, that percentage drops to six. Six percent. All of a sudden, pocket deuces is a monster. It's actually more likely that pocket queens are dominated in a nine player game than that pocket twos are dominated heads up. Of course, there are more things to be wary of than just other dominant pairs, but the point is, your hand is not nearly as vulnerable in a shorthanded situation. So okay, you should think very differently about your low pocket pairs as the table gets smaller. But this effect actually applies even more dramatically to unpaired hands. Consider a weak ace hand like ace six. This can be a tricky one ten-handed. Sometimes it can be worth opening, but you should know that 67% of the time, someone else at the table wakes up with a big pair or a better ace. You're dominated two-thirds of the time. On the other hand, in a six-player game, this hand is dominated less than half the time, and heads up, there's only a 10% chance. It's a completely different situation. Of course, this doesn't mean you want to open your weak aces every time you find yourself in a small game. You want to think about your position, your opponents, your stack size, and about creating balance in your gameplay. But the moral of the story is, when you think about these things, you have to think about them differently depending on the group size. In general, your small pocket pairs and high cards become more valuable when the game is small, and much more valuable when the game gets really small. Play accordingly.